and had family here in Mexico for the past uh, 70 years. Okay, this lecture is on growth hormone. Growth hormone, in my estimation, is probably one of the most important hormones for us to use as a tool to help with longevity, help with age management. So the presentation, it's going to move. Okay. That's for the United States. Oh, let me go back. Since it's Valentine's Day this weekend, I figured I'd share a little love with you, okay? Okay, every year I put together a presentation which talks about the new things that are happening in growth hormone science. And there's a lot of things that were older that I keep in the presentation because they're very important to know the foundation of where growth hormone science came from. Now today's program is going to start with introduction, which is why we would want to replace growth hormone. Now, I can spend the whole week just talking about this topic because there are thousands and thousands, 700,000 articles talking about the benefits of hormone de crecimiento. But there are other areas that are just as important so that you have a balance of why we should use growth hormone. So to answer the first part, why use it? And this is the growth hormone dilemma. The dilemma is, should we use it or shouldn't we use it? We've heard so much about it being bad, cancer and so forth, which I will talk about in the middle or the end. But when we start looking at the benefits of growth hormone, the entire body, the entire body, not just in how tall you are. Our estatura is up to, say, 21 years of age, but everything thereafter is about repair, maintenance of cells, maintenance of tissue, and organs. And if you have failure of growth hormone, you'll start developing symptoms. In this study, 61% of the patients who had growth hormone deficiency developed a form of depression that traditional medicine did not work. But when you replace the growth hormone, within two months, the depression disappeared. And they also had added benefits with weight loss and fat loss and muscle growth. But psychologically, they had major improvement. It reduces not only depression, but it helps with social interaction, which is a form of anxiety called uh, social anxiety. And it also helps with cognitive ability. We found that in the area of the brain, called the hippocampus, that's responsible for memory, recall, and the ability to learn new things, is stimulated by growth hormone, and also testosterone, and also estradiol, and also pregnenolone, and also progesterone, and also DHEA, and also DHT. So what I just said was all our hormones have an incredible function on the quality of our brain. Now, I did endocrinology for 24 years. In the past 11 years, I've been focusing on just the brain. So I work with people who have had brain trauma who are on a um, lot of medications but are still depressed, are still suffering, and sometimes the medication is so much that they are non-functional. We take everybody off of their medication over a period of about three months because the correction of the underlying hormonal deficiency improves it. If I was giving my Alzheimer's lecture, it's all about hormones. The literature is full, showing the relationship between head trauma and Alzheimer's, showing the relationship between hormonal deficiencies and the increase in inflammation that is kept in control by things like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, pregnenolone, and so forth but I got off track. This graph here shows the improvement in, um, or the correlation between adults who have depression and what improves. You see those that are on the top left, no pointer, okay. On the top left, you see that the, uh, when growth hormone is given, that there's an improvement in their emotional reactive score. Anger, explosive anger, irritability, drops down, and that's the green line going down. In the next one, social isolation, that is social anxiety, panic attacks, agoraphobia, you see improvement in it. 
back to the one on the left, general energy level. How many of us wake up in the morning and we just don't have the energy? How about waking up like I do every morning after four hours of sleep and a bottle of scotch the night before with a group of friends here, and I feel great. I am hormonally balanced at 63 years of age. Next is sleep disturbance. One of the major or one of the keys in helping our brain to repair is good sleep. Growth hormone helps to give you nice, deep, reparative sleep. In the heart, in cardiology, what we found is people who have growth hormone deficiency have nine factors that go up to increase your risk for heart attacks. And some of the things that uh, are improved upon, C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-6, which is what gets C-reactive protein, and when you add testosterone to it, you get a further reduction in the immune system called Th1, which is the inflammatory limb of the immune system, and an increase in the anti-inflammatory limb called the Th2. So growth hormone and testosterone together, very good. Growth hormone also drops homocysteine. Homocysteine, if you look at it biochemically, is worse than cholesterol can ever be. It touches the wall and homocysteine destroys the endothelium. Cholesterol, on the other hand, tries to fix the wall. Cholesterol is not our problem. In the gut, Crohn's disease. How many people see Crohn's disease? Well, there are eight studies showing that by correcting growth hormone, you can have improvement in Crohn's disease. Lung, cystic fibrosis. What happens is children who have low growth hormone level and have cystic fibrosis, that when they're given correcting doses of growth hormone, they're not sick as much. They're not in the hospital. And if they do end up in the hospital, they're out faster than the children who are in control group who weren't on growth hormone. Immunology. It enhances the immune system. My patient population, after six months, they fill out questionnaires every month. And by about six months, they start reporting they're not getting sick. They have children in the house who come home from school. They're sick but their parents don't get sick because of the stimulation of the immune system. In orthopedics, we found that growth hormone can improve bone mineral density in uh, a period of, I think it's six months, yeah, six months by 1.6%. We have the pharmaceutical products, of bisphosphonates, that can take up to years and also 10 years for 23% improvement. And you can get loss of bone mass by these medications. It's a major issue we have in the States. So let's see, move on. Also, growth hormone in the kidneys affects the conversion of inactive vitamin D, cholecalciferol, into active vitamin D. And it does it bypassing PTH, parathyroid hormone, which is the one that normally does it. So we have a backup system. And we must have a backup system for a reason. So the need for having growth hormone is very important. This is a slide that has all the different pathways that growth hormone interacts with, um, making sure that the bone plate and the bone density and the cortical bones are uh, dense. If you take a woman who has normal bone mineral density but has low IGF-1 growth hormone, her bones will break just like a person who has low mineral density, bone mineral density. Why? Think of it this way. A piece of concrete you drop on the ground, it shatters. But if you have a piece of concrete with rebar, which is the metal bars in it to give it tensile strength, and drop it, it doesn't shatter. Well, what growth hormone does is builds the cortical bone that allows for tensile strength of the bones, so you don't see the fractures. In the endocrine system, Growth hormone will help you convert T4, inactive reserve form of thyroid hormone, to T3, the active form. And if you have head trauma, as we see, and you put a patient on growth hormone, what it does is it discloses a central hormone deficiency because TSH doesn't go up as T4 goes down. Growth hormone causes T4 to drop and T3 to go up, and the body's supposed to replace it. But if you have head trauma, that doesn't happen. Also, growth hormone has been looked at as this fantastic weight loss product because of its ability to mobilize body fat. 
between 12 midnight and 7 o'clock in the morning, our bodies cannibalize.